the expectation today i know is that we talk about the collapse of svb bank the silicon valley bank in the us but i'll duck that i'll pass that at least for today one because i don't understand it well enough it is a bit out of syllabus for me it needs a lot more reading second there is a moving story it's a moving story because quite a bit of repair work is on and there is a big time difference between india and the us so maybe in a day or two when things become more clearer also when i feel less under confident i must be honest with you i can hold forth on anything but i should not do that kind of punditry with, with you i need to understand that issue better than i do right now on the other hand there is something today which i might claim to know better right at least where where i have some domain knowledge some domain experience which i have been working on for quite some time that is military stuff that is military stuff that is armaments in this case the question of who's selling arms to whom who's buying arms from whom in the world of global arms trade just today the report of the annual report of cipri that is the stockholm international peace research institute that's come out that's a very respected think tank military think tank or global strategic affairs think tank for almost 6 decades now that is that also gives us a count a very detailed count of armaments that the countries have also they keep tabs on arms trade in the world and they show you the trends this is a year after a big war and or in fact this report pertains to 2022 so this is the year of a big war but the war is is in an unusual place usually when you say war you're looking at asia looking at africa the middle east this war is some place else this war is in europe and that is what also shows very clearly in this report and see some of the counter intuitive things in this report it's a very authentic report very author- authoritative everybody quotes it. it it's also put to a lot of peer review in the community that studies these things in the strategic community so if you look at this report it tells you take a deep breath it tells you that in 2022 global arms trade actually declined declined while a full fledged war was on between russia and ukraine the global arms trade actually declined overall global arms trade which is this one doesn't give you the exact numbers for this year because they've got their own their own metric now of giving you kind of constant figures i will i will mention that in just just a bit basically overall decline was 5. 1% and once again look at the regions africa you thought thought all of africa was at war with each other you've seen movies you've read novels you've read books about all the internal wars in africa many are going on stuff is going on in ethiopia mali so many places sub saharan africa sahel a lot of violence is going on all over but in africa in 2022 hold your breath arms purchases declined by how much by 40% by 4040% again where else two wars take place wars take place in asia india pakistan afghanistan regions like that asia and oceania so when you say oceania you, you you're looking at new zealand basically pacific region etc new zealand australia etc those are not very war like regions but Asia is very much part of it South Asia is very much part of it Afghanistan these are regions that were constantly or that have constantly been seen either at war or on the knife's edge in Asia and Oceania arms imports have declined by 7.5% right 7.5% is the decline in Americas Americas you take out the US and Canada although the us and canada also import a few arms canada imports some from america america imports some from here and there essentially small arms they import some stuff from european countries particularly technology software they might import something from israel as well but all of it together all of the americas north america south america central america latin america you add them all in overall arms purchases have declined by 21% and then the usual suspect Middle East, usually uh, for many for many years now, India is the number one arms importer in the world. Saudi Arabia, a much smaller country, is usually the second largest, right? But the Middle East itself has declined by eight point eight percent. So see what has declined. Africa declined forty percent. America has declined twenty one percent. Middle East declined eight point eight percent. Asia and Oceania, which includes India and Pakistan, declined seven point five percent. 
If you add it all up, you would say, then if all this decline has taken place, then how come the decline in global arms trade is only 5.1%? That's because a continent you had never expected will be seen purchasing arms again is now really buying. They are buying weapons as if to make up for an appetite of many, many decades. And that continent, you must have guessed by now you are smart, that continent is Europe. So Europe has seen a 40% increase in arms purchases. So this world has turned upside down, inside out. So from a time when you thought only the developing world, the third world, the poorer world, the warring world, I mean all of the first three epithets or adjectives uh, applied to the warring world, you thought they were the ones buying weapons and all these essays were written by all of us in our college years saying that look, look at these big superpowers, they are selling, they are creating conflicts in the third world, in the poorer world and so that they can sell their own arms there. So people like us, Indians, Pakistanis, etc., etc., can keep killing each other. The opposite has happened now. All the rest of us are buying fewer weapons, but it's the Westerners who are buying weapons mostly from Westerners. So 40% increase in Europe. You can understand why that's happened because Ukraine is currently at war with Russia. Or Russia has invaded Ukraine. And because of that, all of Europe now feels insecure and they are making up. You can see in country after country in Europe, Defense budgets are being heightened. Lately, we've been watching this debate very closely from United Kingdom as well, because there are there are questions about whether they've been underfunding their army or not. Then you then you go ahead. This is the first evidence that the world is now upside down, inside out. But also look at the five largest importers. Five largest importers, India, unfortunately, I hope not for very long. Unfortunately, India is top of the not very pops in this case, right? Number one. Number two is Saudi Arabia, much smaller country, but they buy very expensive equipment and they buy everything, right? So Saudi Arabia, number two. Number three, a tiny little country, Qatar, right? Who's Qatar going to war with? I don't know, but it's Qatar. Number four, Australia. Australians already have trouble now. Australians don't manufacture a lot of the cutting edge weaponry. So they are buying a lot of the NATO, NATO standard American equipment by and large. So Australia and China. Again, a very interesting paradox. China is the fourth largest importer in the world. You thought China was selling arms to everybody. But China is the fourth largest importer in the world. India, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, China, right? China is the fourth largest. But the irony is China is also the fifth largest arms exporter in the world. So fourth largest importer, the fifth largest exporter. Then once again, see some other interesting things. While China is the fourth largest importer and fifth largest exporter, it is also the largest buyer. This data is for five years coming up to 2022. So obviously this may not have happened in 2022. It's a five year average. So over these five years, China is the largest buyer of armaments from which country? Guess from Ukraine. Now, what could they be buying from Ukraine? That will need some deeper search, but I suspect it will be stuff like T-80 tanks of which Ukraine once had so much surplus, they thought they had so much surplus that they sold 300 copies to the Pakistanis as well. That's the reason Pakistanis started manufacturing ammunition for those tanks, which they are now selling in turn to Ukraine, paid for by the British, right? So the Chinese have been buying stuff from Ukraine. I suspect something like equivalent of the AN-26 transport aircraft some of the other aircraft, because a lot of the aeronautical industry went to Ukraine and the Chinese may not be buying many copies of these, many copies as in many, many pieces of these, but maybe they'll buy some and get the technology and then work on it, reverse engineer it and then export it because of all that the Chinese are exporting. I told you fourth largest importers, fifth largest exporters of the stuff that the Chinese export, a lot of it is not designed by them. A lot of it is reverse engineered Soviet origin or Russian origin equipment. Some of that might be coming from Ukraine as well. In, in fact, if you look at the data more closely, you will find other ironies. India is the largest buyer from Russia. Although the Russian component in India's total arms imports has been declining. It is now about 31%. 31% of all of Russia's exports are to India. 
So India is number one, but number two is China. So China is the second largest importer from Russia, the largest importer from Ukraine. Again, very important because if you look at data from look at the data from France, and I will give you some more granular detail in a couple of minutes. India is the largest supplier from France, but China also happens to have France as its third largest supplier. Ukraine number one, Russia number two, France number three. Counterintuitive, but I told you. This world is inside out, upside down. Ye dunya ut patanga. Again, if you want to see the topmost arms suppliers in the world, so I'll give you, I'll give you the list of the top ones, and then I, I will tell you about some interesting outliers, right? Interesting outliers because they are relevant for our discussions. United States, as you would expect, is at the top. They account for forty percent of all the global arms deals. This of this, who are the biggest? Saudi Arabia is the biggest, nineteen percent. Japan is the second biggest, eight point six percent. And Australia, I told you, Australia buys a lot of weaponry from NATO standard weaponry from from the US, eight point four percent. India does not feature in the top three with the with the Americans. In fact, India had a larger share of American. Purchases two years earlier than now, maybe because the orders were made earlier, they were paid for. Fresh orders have not been placed. Russia, Russia is the second largest arms seller in the world, accounting for 16% of global arms trade in these five years. That is 2018 to 2022, 16% of global arms trade, of which India accounts for 31%. That means almost one out of every three dollars worth of. Military equipment exported by Russia has been coming to India, but as I told you, that percentage has been coming down over the years. For example, the previous five years, India's Russian component in India's total arms import bucket has declined from 67 percent to 45 percent, 67 percent to 45 percent. That is as a percentage of India's imports bucket, overall imports bucket. That is from Russia, America, France, Israel. South Korea, South Africa, everybody, right? On the other hand, if you look, just look at Russia's exports. India is thirty-one percent. China, interestingly, the second largest from Russia is twenty-three percent. Egypt is nine point three percent. Although, as we as we track the situation, and I am reading the CIPRI report also, Egypt is now pulling away. It's cancelling some orders, particularly about combat, particularly orders of combat aircraft, and is pulling away. Obviously, under pressure of the sanctions. Then, the third largest arms dealer in the world is France. I am surprised. France is so low. France is 11 percent. I would have thought that by this time, France would have a higher percentage. So, France has 11 percent. Of which, again, which is the biggest buyer from France? You guessed it right. It is India. It's 30 percent. Although there will be an overhang there. Of the Rafale deal because it was a very large deal. So India, thirty percent. So once again, one of all three dollars or three euros worth of military equipment exported by the French comes to India. India is number one at thirty percent. Qatar is number two at seventeen percent. Mind you, Qatar is also been buying the Rafale and Egypt. 8% for similar reasons. China is the fourth largest exporter with 5.2% of the global arms trade in these 5 years 2018 to 2022. And I know you can guess that Pakistan is a big buyer from China, but of all of China's exports, can you imagine what percentage goes to Pakistan? Think. It's high, but think. It's 54%. So 54% Of all of China's exports, so so if China exports two hundred dollars worth of goods, hundred eight dollars worth go to Pakistan, right? It is that big, that big a buyer from China. So fifty four percent of all of Chinese arms exports go to Pakistan. Next largest buyer is again in our neighborhood. It's Bangladesh at twelve percent. So sixty six percent of China's arms arms exports are going to our two neighbors, to our west and to our east. One friendly, one not quite so friendly, and about 4.2 percent go to Serbia. Again, this is a former Soviet equipment dependent nation, so the Chinese make a lot of equipment and spares, which which might be useful for them. Then I look at some outliers. Among outliers, look at South Korea. South Korea is number nine on the list of arms exporters in the world, with 2.4 percent of the global arms share. And again, I am surprised to note. That India features in its top three buyers. So top most buyer is the Philippines, sixteen percent. India, thirteen percent. Number two, and then Thailand, 
13%. Again, from South Korea, India has been buying some artillery, etc. because India is diversing, diversifying its sources. Plus, India is also setting up some joint manufacture. So the artillery we are buying from South Korea is being manufactured jointly in India. So that's part of the Make in India Atnir Bharta program. Again, outlier Israel. Outlier Israel, but always important for India. At number 10 in the global rankings, 2.3% of the global arms trade. I would have thought it was higher. Just imagine what percentage of Israel's arms exports are accounted for by India. Again, it's high, but think about it. Think for a moment. I don't know whether you guessed it right or not, or you got the ballpark right or not. It's 37%. 37% of all Israeli arms exports are to India. Who's the next one? Distant next is Azerbaijan, which is right now not very friendly to India, or at least not seen as very friendly in India because of the, Azer because of the Azerbaijan, Turkey, Pakistan axis. And then the Philippines at 8.5%. And again, among interesting outliers, I find Sweden, which has a tiny sliver of the global arms trade, just 0.8%. Who's the biggest buyer from Sweden? The USA. 25%. Obviously, they're buying a lot of stuff for their missiles, electronics, maybe those Carl Gustav kind of uh, weapons that infantry use now, rocket launchers or RLs as those are called by our army. Our army also uses them. But 25% the US, base is not high. And who's the second biggest buyer from Sweden? If you can guess that, then you are a strategic, strategic expert of the first order. So let me not make you wait too long. The second largest buyer of Swedish equipment, hold your breath, is Pakistan, right? Because Pakistanis have been buying a lot of stuff from Sweden. For example, the aircraft that the Pakistanis use for their airborne early, early warning and control, that their favorite aircraft is a Saab aircraft bought from Sweden. And there is other stuff that the, that the Pakistanis have been buying from Sweden. That is something that usually goes under the radar in India. Let me come back to India. What exactly is happening with India? We are hearing a lot about make in India. India will stop importing or reduce importing. India will start exporting. There are claims that India's exports are going up by 50% every year. That might be true, but that's because the base is very low. So first of all, look at India's overall imports. So you would say, first of all, India's overall imports are not going up, which is good news. India had a share of 12% of the global imports, global trade. In the previous five years, now India is 11%. So you may say, hey Baba, 12% to 11% is no big deal. But it is a big deal because now the base is very high. So the decline is by 11%, from 12% to 11%, and Cipri takes note of that. Second, India's main supplies. I told you India's main supplies come from Russia, France, and, and the US in the past five years because all the other stuff the artillery guns, M777s, etc. were bought earlier, Apaches, uh, C-17, C-130s. Those orders were being serviced, so those were bought earlier. So India, so US is an important supplier for India at number three, but India's largest supplier is Russia, 45%. I told you that's down from 64% in the previous five years. France at 29% and the US at 11%. And if you were to ask me how well is India doing on arms exports, I know there are many promises and a lot of plans being made. But if you look at the data, the picture is a bit complicated. Uh, if you look at the CIPRI data, in 2018, India was 24th in the list of arms exporters in the world. Not bad. 2019, India slipped to 27th. 2020, India made a remarkable improvement, went to 18th. And that was beginning to good, look good. But again, India slipped in 2021 to number 28. So from 24 to 27 to 20 uh, to 18 to 28. And then in 2022, something more dramatic happened. Regrettably, not on the positive side. And this data shows, CIPRI data shows, India slipped to number 41 in the rankings of arms exporters in the world. Then you look at Pakistan. India's overall imports might have declined by one percentage point, by 12% to 11%. In case of Pakistan, it has increased from 3% to 3.7% of the global trade. So a country which is so broke right now, 
accounts for 3.7% of the global trade or global imports of weapon system. And of this, what percentage comes from China? 77% comes from China. 77%, right? Uh, about 5% plus comes from Sweden. So if China is the biggest at 77%, Sweden the second biggest at 5.1%, who's the third biggest supplier to Pakistan? Again, a little surprise, it's Russia at 3.6%. Because Pakistanis have been buying a lot of equipment, including helicopters, but mostly, almost entirely so far, non-lethal equipment from Russia as well. Again, look at the India-France relationship. So today, France is the second highest supplier to India after Russia, but India-France trade or India's imports from France in these five years have increased by 489%. 489%, that's almost five times between 2013-17, five years, and 2018-22, five years. That defines this very special relationship between France and India. But once again, if you look at many other pointers in this, in this data, and it's fascinating. So I will share the entire report with you. There are lots of fascinating pointers there. You may want to read at leisure, please do. And if you find something interesting that I have missed out, please do tell me. But the fact is that you can look at the altered strategic reality of the world by looking at these new trends in arms trade. In fact, this is so interesting now that a country like South Korea, which you never expected to be a big arms exporter, has just signed an $8 billion deal with a country in Europe. Which country is that? It's Poland. So once again, I'll go back to where we started, that this world, this world, particularly after the war in Ukraine, has turned upside down and inside out strategically. Old equations don't necessarily work. New equations are coming into place. And let us see what the next few years are going to be like.